Uh, completed yet another section of, uh, two sections actually, of uh, FIS, Friedberg. <clears throat> uh, someone mentioned some uh, lectures uh, using uh, yeah, proofs, linear algebra uh, uh, course, in, uh, for a linear algebra course, and it's uh, professor, uh, professor Sivakumar in IIET, IIT Madras, so it's Indian Institute of Technology. I started watching them, I drew on the page here, the 52 lectures. I'm going to go very slow because uh, I want to cover a lot of content and there's, this is hours and hours of watching. But I really enjoy, I enjoyed the first two that I watched. Uh, a little fact about IIT, I, I'd, heard, I'd always heard it was like the MIT of India, but it is not a single place. I thought it was located in a single place, but it's all over the country. Anyways, you learn something new every day. Uh, then <clears throat> there were 32 more proofs that I worked on all the in 24 in all the problems to so section 1.3 and 8 in the in section 1.4. So I read a new section and did problems for two completed. And so now I'm up to 78 problems and 48 proofs. As you can see for a proof-based course, I did about a hundred in all of Anton, so I'm already halfway through the volume that I that I did in Anton, and I've only just gotten started. That's just the nature of a proof-based uh, linear algebra course. Uh, for the sections that I covered, of course, unlike Anton, uh, it's a very small amount of space, so really, uh, or, or number of pages. So subspaces, <coughs> and then also, uh, with, with of course, uh, the latter problems and subspaces involve direct sums. So all these are direct sum proofs. Uh, and then the last problem, problem 31, when I get to the notes I'll show you, uh, had like a feature guest from Abstract Algebra, which I really like. I like any call back to Abstract Algebra, and this book is going to help me because the book after this book will have to be, will be, can be, and will be an Abstract Algebra book. Then 1.4, our old friend linear combinations of systems of linear equations. Uh, and th those are uh, problems that take more space and I'm familiar with from Anton. Of course, I'm, I'm, I'm going back through the same content, but now with proofs. So then, uh, for the notes, so I mentioned before, I had already shown in the previous video that I had read section 1.3, and then I'm just doing problems uh, in section 1.3. And of course, I continue to, I only got one true and false wrong this time. Uh, I continue to uh, attempt every single problem, every single proof. That's and that that will be the plan until I hit a wall. And if I don't hit a wall, then it'll be every single problem. So proofs are not that lengthy for all these problems. They they all work on the same principles. <clears throat> Everything about subspaces. So you gotta find uh, uh, the, find the closure for scalar multiplication and uh, addition of vectors, and then you gotta have the zero vector. You got those three. You got a subspace. So just going going through all of these problems, uh, when I hit 31 for section 1.3 is when I had a call back for abstract algebra and somebody, one of my wonderful viewers recommended this book or books by Robman and I actually have this one and the graduate level one uh, and so I used this book to understand a little bit of Lagrange's uh, theorem <coughs> and cosets uh, but of course, the problem that I had with this problem, problem 31, is that it would have taken me too far afield to, for example, read everything in a, in a beginning abstract algebra book and then land in Lagrange's theorem. What I did find, which I thought was very interesting, is that really uh, Lagrange's theorem, let me see where it starts, is really a retelling of the subspace theorem. Uh, for groups. So instead of zero being in the uh, your subspace, it's one that's in the group, and instead of you adding x and y, you're, you're really doing the product of x and y, which is really in a group just really two movements within the table of the group, and then uh, if you can go forward in the group within the table, you can go backwards. Uh, and of course, I'm familiar with crystallographic groups from way back when, 
So if you think of a lattice, if you move in, in a lattice from one point to another, you can always go back to the previous point. Now when it gets strange with cosets is, and this is a coset theorem, is I wasn't able to do a couple of examples. I'll just have to wait until I do uh, abstract algebra. Uh, I watched these uh, video lectures, which I think I'm gonna link to. The specific lecture that I watch, I'm gonna put in the description of this video because I think uh, Socratica, the, the, uh, the uh, web, I'm sorry, the YouTube channel Socratica did an incredible job. So I'll put it in there. But I just couldn't find a good example where I would work out all the co cosets for a group and really understand what these actions were to then come back and translate it to this problem. I did the best that I could, but I don't feel comfortable with the answer that I gave. I did give it my all, as always. Uh, so then section 1.4, read it. This is, I don't want to call it simple, but it's uh, uh, familiar territory from Anton. And yes, I will continue to work through FIS to, uh, through problems that were very similar to the ones I did in Anton. I went back to the appendix to a problem that I mentioned where you're given uh, four polynomials and you and they're all um, they're all prime, and then you want to make sure that you can rewrite them as pro uh, with a, a basis of other polynomials. I tried it again. Now learning more from this book, though, because this book does things a little differently, does more than the, than Anton, hits it at a different angle, and I still am not satisfied. So we'll keep we'll keep plowing along. Uh, then uh, then the rest of the, of the problems, section 1.4, and uh, yeah, these are all just uh, problems similar to the ones that that we've done in Anton, where. You try to you solve out the matrix, and if you get multiple values, or you get one equals to zero, something like that, it's inconsistent. And if you can uh, plot in a value of a and b for the the basis to equal that number, so that 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 vector is in this basis spanned by these two vectors, then you'll get something that is uh, that has a that has a solution, a unique solution. Then a couple more proofs for vector spaces. Not that many, this, this section has fewer problems. And of course, problem 13, I went and checked on the web uh, because these the, the answer is on the web and I'll put the link uh, in the description of this video. And um, I did more than I needed to and I did get it right, so that's great. Using just basic set theory, I was able to figure out how to do all these other proofs for uh, span, these are span proofs. And there is the end of section 1.4. And I'll just take this sheet out again and just use it as I take notes for the next section.